vomited by the lift. How delightful. room in these lifts. Upper level. Alright, I take it back. They give you loads of room in these lifts. Welcome to Bimbleism. I, as always, am your host Kieran. And today's Bimble starts here in Birkenhead. I'd planned on getting the ferry over the Mersey to get here. But they don't run until 10 o'clock. And I like to Bimble early. Beat the people. Not, not beat the people but get there before all the other people. We're on something called the Wirral Way or National Cycle Route 56 and we're going for a wander or a bimble because we're on our bicycles around the circumference of the Wirral we're going to take in the sights, see what we see so without further ado I think we should bimble, let's bimble in front of the hydraulic tower which stands according to my big book of bimbles 110 feet tall and it was used to open up all the bridges and locks here at Birkenhead Docks or as they known the Great Float there's apparently four miles worth of key 
at the Great Float or Birkenhead Docks. So that's four miles worth of places you can park your boat. The first dock was built here in 1847 and the last one was built in 1933. And funnily enough, that's the one that they filled in. Interesting stuff, you can have a good day out just going around the docks in Birkenhead if you like boats and you're a nerd like me. But we have other boats to see and other things to see, so let's bimble. Moods can be lifted the brighter the day. Take the blue skies and I'll take the grey. It's up to the weather, you know that I surely would say. She loves that. You can love a woman, that's okay. You can love the sun in every way. You can love the breeze and blow away. She loves the rain. She loves the She loves the rain. Seacombe and this was supposed to be the start of the bimble I've got it all planned out we were going to come over on the Mersey ferry and start bimbling from here but the ferry doesn't start until 10 o'clock and I like a good early morning bimble it's currently two minutes to eight so 10 o'clock's no good it's just no good things to do, people to see. Take the grey, it's up to the weather, you know that I surely would say. She loves that. You can love the warm, that's okay. You can love the sun in every way. You can love the breeze and blow away. She loves the rain. She loves that. She loves the rain. keeping my peepers out for our next port of call it was somewhere around here I think I can see the plaque oh it's right near a coffee place it means there's going to be loads of people how embarrassing let's find somewhere to park up So believe it or not, New Brighton used to have a tower, just like Blackpool has a tower. In fact, it was a tower that was 17 metres taller than Blackpool Tower. When it was built in 1900, it was apparently the tallest building in Britain. Now, according to my big book of bimbles, the tower closed in 1914 due to World War I, so everyone that used to maintain the tower went off to war. And in that time, whilst the war was going on, the tower fell into a bit of disrepair, it was a bit rusty. So when all the soldiers came back, they had to make a decision whether they should keep the tower or whether they should dismantle it. And they decided to dismantle it, so that's why we don't say New Brighton Tower. They kept the ballroom underneath, just like at Blackpool it had a giant ballroom underneath. And apparently they had what's called a menagerie. So that's like 
a bit like Joe Exotic. They had uh, Nubian lions, they said. Tigers, elephants, that kind of thing. So people of New Brighton and Liverpool and the surrounding areas could come and look at the animals. Unfortunately, the ballroom underneath the tower burnt down in 1969. So all we have now is this playing field to remind us of where it was and a skate park. But interesting stuff. I've got to keep my peepers open because there's a little turning down here where we can go and see something else interesting in New Brighton. Is this it? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it is. No, it's not. We've gone the wrong way, but we'll find it. This is what Bimbling's all about. You turn down the wrong street, you see all kinds of things. Well, this is definitely what I'm here to see. In 2018, knackered, that was slightly uphill, sorry. In 2018, the Council of New Brighton decided to regenerate the town centre. And they decided to do it by putting up these large murals all over the sides of buildings see if we can find some more Should really have dubstep music playing as we're looking at these. We just have to make do with a little bit of indie pop. Lost along the way As sure as night designed the day As long as I'm allowed to say It's my heart that told me I don't care, you just disagree Without you it wasn't meant to be You showed me from the start This is Fort Perch Rock. And according to my big book of bimbles, it was built between 1825 and 1829. And it was built to protect the port of Liverpool from smugglers and pirates and skullduggery. It's supposed to be a museum now, but it never seems to be open. But it's not all. 
if we turn this corner. The fabulous Perch Rock Lighthouse, aka New Brighton Lighthouse, aka Black Rock Lighthouse. I don't know if you can see on the video, but the door seems to be open, but I don't think there'll be anyone in as it's decommissioned. It's built of Anglesey granite and they use marble dowels and it's the same design as the Edison Lighthouse, only a little bit shorter. Do you like a lighthouse? Let's bimble and go and see another lighthouse. Bimble. As sure as night designed the day As long as I'm allowed to say It's my heart that told me I don't care, you just disagree Without you it wasn't meant to be You showed me from the start Fabulous Leto Lighthouse, built in 1763 according to the plaque. It was one of four lighthouses built by Liverpool Docks trustees. The idea of having four lighthouses is that if you're out at sea and you get all four lighthouses in a line, it would lead you into the channel, into the Mersey and into Liverpool Docks without hitting any of the sandbanks. But by 1908, they discovered that all the sandbanks had shifted around under the water, which is fairly obvious that that would happen. So all these lighthouses were a little bit pointless. So they sold them off, and this one was bought by its last lighthouse keeper, Mrs. Williams, and she's thought to be one of the only female lighthouse keepers at the time. And she bought it and moved into a cottage next door and turned it into a tea rooms. And that ran until 1935 when she died. And then it became a derelict lighthouse. Just no one wanted to live in it, which is ridiculous because I want to live in it right now. But fairly recently, a group of people got together and formed Friends of Liso Lighthouse. And they've started looking after it and they even have open days where you can go in and have a look inside. But not today. We've got bimbling to do. We're just coming up to Hoy Lake, which is a lovely place and it's great for a beach walk. 
and it has a few famous people that were born there. Cliff Williams from ACDC, the bass player, he was born there. 007 himself, Daniel Craig, he was born there. Cyclist, Chris Boardman. <laughs> Actress and politician Glenda Jackson. Indie poppers the Coral, they were born around here. In fact, there's one famous landmark of one of the famous bands that came from Hoylake that we're about to go and see now. I need to keep my peepers open. I don't want to miss the turning. Is it down here? Is it? Let's just go and have a look up here. Indeed it is not. That's not the way. Not just yet. I should really pull over and look in my big bimble book. Dove Ponce Road. We turn left onto Dove Ponce Road and carry on straight. Ah, Greenwood Road. There it is. I can see it now. I'm going to get run over. He's waiting for me. I'll give him the wave. Up on the pavement So you may be wondering why I brought you to a telephone box in the middle of the Wirral Well it's a famous telephone box It was used by Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark or OMD as they called to the fans And it was used as their contact number for all their early releases it features in the second single, Red Frame, White Light, which it has a red frame and white light would come through it. And the number features in it, 6323003. And they would send out all the records and that would be the number that was on the back of the records. In 2017, according to my big book of bimbles, BT took it away and fans of OMD went nuts and they formed a group called Friends of 6323003 and they demanded that it was put back and it was put back after two months and now it stands as a monument to I suppose DIY music now I have a theory that the code on this door is the numbers from the phone number I think we should give it a go that would make it 6320 press C first, you always press C first and we go six, three, two, zero. And that should be it. No, of course it's not. a new way to get from Hoy Lake here to West Kirby. I've been studying something called open street maps and if you're not in the know you should have a look but sometimes what it calls psychopaths that's psychopaths not psychopaths 
They're not really psychopaths, they're psychopaths for psychopaths. But apparently, down one of these streets, I can turn off, go straight, and there's a different way to get to West Kirby. Off the Wirral Circular. Oh yes. This is all part of the Bimble adventure. You gotta find new ways to go. New exciting cycle path. Because you don't know what you're gonna find at the end of them or in the middle of them. Could be nothing. Could be an absolute nightmare. Could be something else. More promising, more promising. I can see a fabulous lighthouse coming up. Which I didn't know was there, so... Bonus, bone eye. That's three lighthouses today. Ooh, that lighthouse looks like it's now someone's house. And they've built a lovely conservatory on the top of it. What a fantastic idea. Yeah, I want one. There it is. How wonderful. Hmm, well I think we might change our plans, knowing this now. So our random bimbling was fortuitous. Because although I can see now that what it called a psychopath was in fact a cliff, I've actually found a better way to get to where we wanted to go. Where is it that we were going? Well, Hilbert Island is something called an archipelago. Not Archipelago, I think he plays for AC Milan. But an Archipelago, it's 43 small islands just inside the estuary of the River Dee. Now you've got to be careful going to this island because it's accessible on foot in six hour chunks, three hours after high tide, and then to three hours before the next high tide. So I've definitely got to be off this island by three o'clock, which I'm hoping to be because I haven't got a drink or anything like that. So according to my notes, it was named after an Anglo-Saxon holy woman called St. Hildeberg. It used to be called St. Hildeberg's Island. Now it's called Hilbra Island. It's, as far as I know, unmanned. It used to have someone on the island at all times to help anyone that got stranded on the island. I suppose bring them out a cup of water or give them one of them foil blankets. But uh, they advertised for the job, apparently, and no one took it. I would have took it, but I didn't know about it at the time. Bear in mind, though, there's no gas, no electricity, no internet. Just a house over there that you're landlocked on in six hour chunks. If you want to pop over to West Kirby to go in the Morrisons, you've got to make sure that you're back within six hours. Otherwise, you've got to live in Morrisons. I'm slightly perturbed by the fact that there's no one walking in a straight line to the island like I am. There seems to be a lot of people off in the distance. But you can only suck it and see, can't you? We're having a leg bimble. Yeah, I think all this walking through the sea 
is the reason why no one's walked the way I've walked. Not so much that I'm clever, that more that I'm stupid. Just trying to figure out what's the best way to go. I've got a feeling I'm just going to get wet either way. Hang on, I might be onto something here. That looked like a long way on the GoPro. It looks even longer when you've actually stood near it. And I'm thinking, right. <laughs> Let's find a different way. <laughs> Just have to get wet socks. I'm going for it. He's right in. Oh dear. Oh well, that's how you don't do that. That's how not to do that next time. Some bit of boat or something. If this were the 1500s. There'd be some natives with spears coming to get me right as we speak. I would have to be offering them wares from my country. I bring you GoPro cameras and a bike pump. Hopefully walking up here isn't walking me into someone's back garden. We'll just have to see. There's no sign saying go away Kieran so it must be okay in that direction is Talacra which is just around the corner from Prestatin so we're not far away from Wales really back over there is where we've just come from I think that building with the nice round glass in the front makes our fourth lighthouse of the day That's four lighthouses one video this bashed up old building over here seems to be a cool hang seems to be where everyone is I think we need to go and check it out an ancient wall and a little tiny ancient bridge how cute he is over an ancient gorge. Here. The ground's so soft. It feels more comfortable than my mattress at home. I can just hear my girlfriend chiming in saying, Yes, it is. It's rubbish. Well folks, I'd like to look at all 43 of the little islands in Hilborough. But we must bimble. We must. And I must get a drink. I'm really thirsty. And I probably must get a meal deal. Chicken and bacon, obviously. Oh, I can finally see dry land. 
back on the mainland. I do hope my little bicycle's okay. I think I can see it over in the distance. And that was the fabulous Hilborough Island. I shall be back. flavour, they made a big whoop about it on the uh, packet, saying it's beechwood smoked and all that. So I'm tasting the smoke. One good thing about a Morrison's meal deal, two pork pies as a snack, you can't go wrong. And a bottle of Oasis to wash it all down with, which, you know, everyone knows is just squash in a bottle, but it was needed. As you can see, the sun's out, so the guns are out. We're about to put on some sun cream, and then we're going to continue the bimble. Pretty sure I've gone the wrong way. Again, the signs just evaporate. They just disappear, and you're expected to know where you're going. Hopefully, this little cut is the answer. You may be asking, what is this cycle path you brought us on, Kieran? This is the old Chester to Birkenhead Railway, and it used to link Hooton, which is the direction we're going, to West Kirby. The last passenger service went on, let me look at my bimble book, 1956. It closed completely in 1962, and it was opened in 1886. And it's lovely stones. And there's not too many people. And I believe it's downhill from here, which is good because the wind's against us. Over time, clouds kept the light in those eyes. Still, love grown comes you. And you know, I'll never let it go. know how to speak my mind to 
Chester to Birkenhead Railway. We're finally in Hooton and there's not a lot to see. I'm glad I did that railway. I've done it in its entirety now, but that's enough. Uh, I don't think I need to go back and do that again. Some roads are just unpleasant to ride your bike down. Country roads, oddly, seem to be less pleasant than town roads. I think everyone's just in much more of a hurry on a country lane. This is an awful section of the Wirralway, awful. My apologies, Bimbleth. This is just a road. Next week on Bimbleism, the M62. This better pick up in a minute. Where actually am I going? Oh, this is looking a bit more promising. Some nice cottages, a country pub, a lovely church. Oh, should we have a shandy? We could have a shandy, couldn't we? Oh, shall we? Yeah, let's. It's not usual bimble practice this. I don't usually frequent pubs, summer bimbles. But I am only having a little shandy. Just to wet the whistle and get over the arduous Chester to Birkenhead Railway. And the equally arduous traffic situation. Starting to look a bit more countryfied though. I think I may need to reapply sun cream soon. Don't want to burn the guns again. Let's shimble. Well, a delightful shandy was had. And we're in the picturesque village of Eastham. It all sprung up around this church, the Church of St Mary, that's the one we've just passed. It's rather lovely to look at. Eastham comes from the Anglo-Saxon word ham, meaning home. And it was the east of a settlement that the Anglo-Saxons made, so east home. Eastham. So any place you go to that's got ham in the name, it means home in Anglo-Saxon. Those eyes still 
Bromber Pool. And it was built between 1853 and 1859. And it's what's known as a model village. That doesn't mean that it's made out of plastic and it's miniature. That means it was built as like a social experiment. And everyone that lived here worked at the same place, Price's Patent Candle Company. Try and say that after you've had a shandy. It's got 17 listed buildings here, but the next place we're going to has that beat. Let's bimble. This is Port Sunlight and it's another model village, not a little miniature one made of plastic. But this one was made by Lever Brothers and I'm quite familiar with Lever Brothers because I'm from Warrington. If you've ever travelled to Warrington Banquet, that big factory next to it, that's Lever Brothers. Up until about a year ago they used to make personal washing powder there. And Lever Brothers built this village for all the workers at the Port Sunlight factory. It boasts 900 grade 2 listed buildings and it gets used to film Peaky Blinders a lot because they need period correct houses and they've got at least 900 here. It boasts two very famous people that have come from here and that would be Pete Burns from the band Dead or Alive of You Spin Me Right Round fame and that Fiona Bruce off that news I wonder if she talks posh living round here I've heard what they said Ignored what I read And looked to the bright side so here's to the bad times, forgotten in good lives. I will, I will, I will let you down. I will, I will, I will let you down. I'll take off my shoes and dance to the good news. Broken smiles, well, they will turn it round. Smiles, well, they will turn it round. So take off your shoes and dance to the good news. Left to long. Very slipway and it was built in 1820 to take a ferry that's why Rock Ferry is called Rock Ferry over to Liverpool and back again it's actually grade 2 listed now and it's a whopping if my bimbo book's correct 230 meters long it seems to get used for people launching the jet skis, bringing the dinghies back in. I think it's quite a fitting end to our Wirral Way adventure. This slipway next to it seems to have seen better days. 
I think this could do with being listed as well, if it's of any use. What a fabulous adventure we've had. What have we seen? We've seen stunning artwork. We've seen where a tower used to be. We've been on a secret island in the middle of the D estuary. We've been on a disused railway line for too long. We had a pint of shandy. We've seen some model villages. Not little tiny miniature plastic ones, real life ones. And we've seen a grade two listed stone slipway going into the murky Mersey. All in all, I would say that's a classic bimble, if I do say so myself. It only remains to say, if you've enjoyed my bimble adventure, why not consider subscribing? If you have an idea for a bimble adventure, why not comment below? If you'd like to know exactly when I go on my next bimble, press the bell icon. And until next time, happy bimbling. See you later. So take off your shoes and dance to the